Hello everyone. My name is Annette Lavon and I'm the CTO and VP of R&D of Ale Farms and it is uh, great uh, to be here at the CMS. Uh, it's the third time that I'm here and I'm really excited to uh, meet you again. Some old friends, thank you for Alex and Anita for inviting me. And um, I specifically enjoy uh, coming here uh, year after year because it forces me to stop my everyday activities and lay back to look on the year that went through, taking a few moments to enjoy how much was done. <clears throat> it has been a fascinating year uh, for Ale Farms, starting with releasing our 3D printed stakes, uh, the entry cards that we have shown uh, the first for the world, and through uh, closing and 105 million round B closing, uh, allowing to fulfill our plans and had new investors as our supporters. And just uh, lastly, we announced the addition of Leonardo DiCaprio as investor and member of our sustainability board. But today I would like uh, to focus on the company's long-term strategy of business collaborations. We believe that collaborations with industry stakeholders will assist accelerating unique technologies and scale up of the cultivated meat and eventually lead to a broader uh, positive impact and win-win for everyone at the ecosystem. Ale Farms is cultivating meat, uh, as you know, in our headquarter in Rehovot in Israel. A brief introduction about Ale Farms to uh, the new guys in the field. So we were co-founded in 2017 by Didier Toubier, the kitchen hub of the Strauss Group and Professor Shulamut Levenberg, from the Biomedical Engineering Faculty at the Technion Israel. And uh, this group, of course, is uh, part of us all, all the way, uh, parts of our round A and round B, and, uh, and working hand in hand uh, today, four years after we have been established. And the team expands. Today, we have more than 50 employees at Ale Farm. 35 of them are the R&D team. And we are in the process of building our pilot plant and having our initial launch by the end of next year. Our first product is the Thinkad beef steak. And as, as I told you, we have a second product that is in our pipeline to be developed in parallel as a different option using the 3D printing. So uh, what else I can tell you uh, about um, Ale Farms? So Ale Farms is, is, is a unique technology that is uh, designated to large scale production. It is uh, granting us a clear path for price parity within five years from our initial launch in 2022. Our technology replicates the natural process from inside the animal body and transformed it into a controlled production environment. The controlled production environment enables us to design and customize uh, the production into high quality meat with high nutritional values and eliminates the need for antibiotics, as you know, and risks for contaminations. We are focusing on growing the quality stakes directly from non-GMO and non-immortalized cells. We have developed an inclusive model that includes collaboration with local stakeholders from the food sector. As you can see here, our four uh, pillars of Ale Farms is our scalable meat cultivation platform with clear path for cost parity and regulatory clearance. Meat from natural cells that are non-GMO and non-immortalized and work with pluripotent stem cells. And the focus on quality meat and steaks, the most challenging of all meat to cultivate that because we not only grow the cells, we also, uh, as, as in suspension, but we also create a tissue out of them. And last but not least is our commitment to carbon neutrality and the global ecosystem with our great food partners. And to continue with this uh, transition, so we have actually, the, we're the first company to uh, commit to carbon neutrality by 2025 of our manufacturing plants and across our entire supply chain by 2030. We were the first one to declare such a commitment to carbon neutrality and work uh, close by with a company doing our life cycle analysis 
as continuation for the life cycle analysis that was done by the Good Food Institute and we were part of. And now we're doing this process specifically on our inputs of the process that is already updated and scaled up, uh, helping us to select what kind of process we would like to use for our inputs for the growth media, for example, for the process itself as you know, energy supply and all the inputs and the outputs that we have in our process. Just a few notes about Alifarms to the ones of you who did not follow us along the years. So in December 2018, we were the first one to cultivate beefsteak directly from cells and show our uh, Thinka beefsteaks to the world. We were also the first to produce meat in space in uh, September 2019 with the 3D printing uh, solution, a company that is uh, established in Russia. We have sent our cells to the International Space Station and uh, there they were printed to create this first cultivated meat in space. Uh, the idea of working in space is really to ensure that we have access to quality food independent of climate or availability of natural resources to anyone, anytime and anywhere. And at the beginning of this year, we have published the proof of concept of our rib eye steak, co-developed with our research partners at the Faculty of Biomedical Engineering at the Technion Institute, uh, Israel Institute of Technology. The cultivated rib eye incorporates a muscle, fat and vascular-like system similar to a rib eye from a slaughtered cow. Uh, in strategy to build a diverse portfolio of cultivated meat cuts in any dimension. And you can see it here as our prototype. So as you know, meat uh, consumption is expected to grow in the coming years and research and reach a value of 1.8 billion US dollar by 2040. Cultivated meat is expected to reach 35% of the meat consumption to allow such a huge increase first and foremost we need the customers and here i would like to show you a recent customer acceptance study that we took part in affirms that cultivated meat is likely to make up a major part of consumers in the future diets on average consumers in the us and uk imagine that cultivated meat could make up about 40 percent of their future future meat intake uh, with conventional meat uh, constituting about 60%. So this combination of both options uh, to be consumed in the future. The study shows that there is a great openness in, sig in significant segment of people, especially the younger generations that are driven by environmental factors such as sustainability and animal welfare and older generation by health and food safety drivers. And you can see the high acceptance by consumer as, uh, you know, for us, a tailwind that pushes us forward to develop our meat as fast as possible. But to further allow our, our success, we are forming partnerships across our value chain as part of our go-to-market strategy from upstream to bring downstream the manufacturing cost and increase efficiencies uh, all across from upstream to downstream. So we have started working with companies that supply our raw material, our manufacturing process for the biology in the steer tank bioreactors and in our tissue bioreactor, and then downstream with food processing companies, and then of course the sales and marketing. And uh, the idea is that we are collaborating with these companies uh, in order to optimize our process and make it cost efficient with the uh, partners that are specializing in these fields and already have experience in the food industry. And of course, in such technologies like uh, biomanufacturing of bioreactors and growth media. So we are based on their knowledge and we develop our unique uh, formulations, for example, for the growth media in their facilities. And by this, we can really increase our capacity to spread our production globally. And that is the idea. Uh, and this uh, spread of uh, global of olive farms into different fields have actually started with collaboration in uh, Mitsubishi in Japan, in BRF in Brazil, 
uh, with uh, Migos in uh, Switzerland and uh, all over uh, in other in, in, in more locations. As discussed uh, in the last uh, two, two days, one of the near future challenges of cultivated meat is scaling up and eventually reach the cost parity with meat industry. Our technology and uh, production uh, proprietary production platform enable us to have a clear path to large scale and price, price parity within five years of launch. We have formulated a proprietary growth medium and we optimize it to be cost effective together with partners uh, that are experts in the fields to secure our supply chain requirement through scaling. We are partnering with some of the biggest world biggest food companies to form punch partnership to enhance manufacturing and marketing of other farms cultivated meat and uh, some of them I have discussed and you can see uh, the slide that is showing the cost of our growth media that comes down as we start uh, uh, having our commercial launch in large scale in 2027. The vision of, 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 of production closer to where consumers are and to minimize food miles and to enhance food security and together with strategic partners to accelerate country's goal to become robust and food self-sufficient and improve the sustainability of the food ecosystem. So you can see here the global platform of our local production, production that independent from the local natural resources and closer to the diners that means mitigating the global choke points, minimizing transportation and food miles, promoting biodiversity, empowering local communities and personalizing products to local food culture. And you can see here our chef with a Korean grill. And as you know, CJ are one of our partners and we are developing all kinds of dishes that can fit this market uh, to the culture that they are being used to consume. The main driver behind cultivated meat is the need to develop a sustainable production, addressing the overuse of dependency of natural resources and to continue feeding the global population. The transition, the transitional agricultural system must adopt innovative and sustainable technologies. Today, there is a gap between the limited natural resources and meat production capabilities and growing global demand for meat. Cultivated meat can be a solution to such a gap. You can see here what we plan to do in our new production streams along the core conventional production, integrate into existing meat sector ecosystem, synergize sustainability commitment and core values, leverage expertise and existing XX infrastructure to derive a faster scale up and enable producer to meet ESG goals, climate and food security. And uh, our vision, and, and last but not least, I would like to share with you our inclusive solution for sustainable and resilient meat sector. We have just released an, in this uh, white paper uh, about that identifies an in-depth multidisciplinary approach to achieving resiliency and sustainability in the meat sector in, uh, in different aspects that are including responsible consumption, sustainable agriculture and intermental innovation, transformational innovation, meat analogs and cultivated meat as hybrid products, just transition, policy and regulation, and the four pillars of sustainability. All of them together would promise us resilient and sustainable meat sector. And you are invited to download this paper from our website. And last but not least, I would like to conclude with our vision about providing a secure and unconditional access to high quality nutrition for anyone, anytime, anywhere. Our technology platform and our partnership with the world's leading food and meat companies help us to fulfill our vision to lead the global food system transition to a more sustainable, equitable and secure world. And thank you very much. And I'm sorry I could not join you at San Francisco, but I'm looking forward to meet you in person next year. Thank you to all of you.